Well, hello everybody. This video is going to be about my plans for this summer's garden. Show you some of the things, the seeds that have already arrived. I think most of my seeds are here, actually. I've ordered some plants and some potato seeds that won't arrive until sometime in the spring. Potatoes first and the plants later in the spring when it's safe to ship them. I had a problem showing up with my uh, raised beds. Uh, probably 10 years old and they weren't made out of pressure treated lumber so they're starting to decay and fall apart. I've looked at these in several different catalogs and whatever over the years and thought I'd like to try one. So I ordered this large one. It's uh, 50 inches across and 12 inches deep um, which I think it said was something like 13 and a half uh, square foot of, of surface and the uh, um, square beds that I'm talking about replacing were four foot square, so that's 16 square feet. It isn't, it isn't that much different in, in growing space. I have used the same material in grow pots, and it works very well. I don't think it will decay or break down, well, not anytime soon. I suppose everything in sunlight eventually breaks down. But anyway, I'm going to give one bed a try, and if it... Uh, works out later on in the summer I may replace a couple of more beds uh, in preparation for next year's garden. Um, I'm thinking it will work just as well as the wood raised beds and probably last a little longer. So Let's move on here and have a look at some of the seeds. I'm not going to show you everything. Some of it's pretty ordinary, um, you know, broccoli and beans and such, but I will show you some of the things that I'm all well starting right now actually two or three of these items are going to be seeded today to grow in the house over the winter. Well, One of the things that I'm going to be seeding today is my rhubarb. I have rhubarb growing in a couple of locations on my property and it's sort of run out. It's, it still comes up and produces a little bit of rhubarb. And I could certainly dig it up and divide it and put it in some richer soil with a lot of compost and it would take off and do fine. But I've always wanted to try it from seed. I've seen other people grow it from, from seed and videos and whatever. So it's something I've always wanted to give a try. So I ordered this particular one, an organic seed. The variety is called Victoria. And I guess it actually does date from the 1800s some time, time around there. Uh, I'm going to be seeding that today, as I said, and I'll give you updates on it as, as time goes on here. Hopefully we'll get some good germination. And I've sent seed to a couple of the gardeners that I follow, and uh, maybe you'll see something on their channels too. If you've been watching my gardening videos over the past few years, you know that I grow alpine strawberries in the hoop house. Not so sure that they are hardy enough to make it through our winter outside here. I have had larger kinds of berries in the past, ever-bearing, which this particular one is. Fresco is also an ever-bearing berry. Starts its bear starts for its fruiting in in uh, June and uh, we'll continue to bear strawberries right through till you get frost in the fall. Once again, I'm going to try it from seed. And it's a bit of a more involved process. I'll have to, you can have a look at it when uh, I do the planting here in just a few minutes. I'm just showing off the first three things that I'm going to plant and then I'll put a little video clip in of, of seeding them in. Looking forward to this, it is even supposed to produce some fruit in the first year if you get it started early enough. Well, starting it in mid-January, at least planting the seeds in mid-January, but germination takes up to seven weeks, so I may not see fruit on it this year, but that's not a problem either. I always like to have a few geraniums, and I have grown them from seed before. I find when you grow them from seed you get a mulch well, I wouldn't say healthier, but you get a stockier plant. The ones that you buy at garden centers are grown from cuttings. I don't know what 
kind of a difference that makes, but I've always liked the ones that I grew myself from seed, and I haven't done it in a number of years, but it's something that around here you have to really start early, so I'm starting them in mid-January. We'll see what happens here, but there. that is the third of the three things that I'm going to uh, seed now. So the next little clip I will show you will be starting these three things from seed, the rhubarb, the strawberries, and the uh, geraniums. I'm going to bring you back here in a few minutes to show you what I've done. But first we're going to um, plant some of those seed that I want to uh, germinate and, and grow on during the winter. I've decided to add uh, the lettuce seed to, well, I guess three pots or so of the, of the lettuce seed, uh, just to see how that grows under lights. Um, and I have a couple of other things I want to show you here in the grow room, but let's go have a look at uh, potting these seeds up first. Well, the first thing I'm going to try sowing here are the strawberry seeds. It said there were 40. I'm not going to count them. They're very, very small. I'm just going to try to pick them up one or two at a time on the end of my finger here. And transfer them to the soil. This is going to take time, I guess, but I don't want to put them all in one place. The uh, this is just a very fine commercial seed starting mixture and I will sprinkle a small amount of dry mix over the top here just to cover the seeds that's a lightly moistened now what's in there and then I don't have a plastic bag big enough that will cover this. So I'm going to wrap it in plastic wrap and it gets refrigerated for three to four weeks. So I'll probably leave it in the full four weeks. Then you bring it out and let it get back up to room temperature and uh, then you put it on bottom heat. And it still says germination can take up to six or seven weeks after that. So, well, since both the rhubarb and the geraniums will go on bottom heat immediately to to germinate, hopefully, I'm going to plant them in this same tray. Rhubarb down this end, geraniums up this end. There are ten geranium seeds. I'm just trying to get them spread out a bit again. If I can get it off my finger. bring you back when I'm doing the uh, rhubarb seeds. Rhubarb seeds are much larger, easier to handle. I might even poke them down a little bit as I put them in, I guess. don't have any idea how well these things will germinate. I've done geraniums before and had pretty good success. I don't think you ever get 100%, but I don't know what to expect from the rhubarb. So. I'll plant whatever I've got left here, or whatever I've got room for anyway. I'm only planning to plant the rhubarb in one four foot square bed. So, probably four or five plants is all I need, really. I think that's enough. The geraniums are in this area. So. We'll cover that over with some soil, a little bit of the dry soil, and then there's a plastic dome that goes on this, and it'll go immediately on bottom heat, but I'll show you that in the, in the grow room shortly. Well, I've decided also I'm going to try some of the lettuce that I'm growing. It's called Little Gem Pearl, and it's a variety of romaine, a cos lettuce, but it's a miniature variety. So I'm going to put a couple of seeds in each of these. The description says that at full growth it makes enough lettuce for a couple of salads. So 
I'm going to try, as I say later on, I think here, I'm going to try uh, growing it in um, oh, like uh, window box type things. I don't have much luck growing lettuce in the garden. <laughs> the slugs enjoy it, but I don't get very much. Well, there's a lot more seed in each one of those than I plan to put there, but I'll just pinch off the ones that I don't need, I guess. Cover them over just a little bit here with some more of this moist soil and pack it down a little. These will be uh, covered with plastic wrap with an elastic band around them. I'll show you what that looks like when we get to the grow room. And hopefully there will be room enough on the heat pad for, for these along with the tray. Not so sure that there will be. The heat bed isn't that big, I guess, but they'll be under lights anyway. So let's go have a look at these things in the grow room, and there's a couple other things up there I'd like to show you. I just moved the host tomatoes down to the lower level, make it easier to tend the things that I'm waiting to, for them to germinate up above. Um, I thought that they were underwatered all the time because the top is very dry. Well, when I lifted them up to move them down below, each pot's very heavy. I think it's only the surface that's dry, so I'm going to try to cut back on the water a bit and see if that doesn't improve their their health. Um, there are a few green ones there still to, to ripen. I've used almost all of the ripe ones. I don't have any show in this or not, but I can see two that I haven't picked there. As I've said before, they're delicious. They're small, but they have wonderful flavor. So, No new blossoms right now, but I do see a couple of places that look like blossom trusses that are starting to come out. So if I cut back on the water, maybe we'll have better luck. Well, under the glare of these lights, once again, it is not easy to do video. Uh, I was correct in my assumption that there isn't going to be room on the heat mat for the lettuce, but that's okay. I think it'll probably germinate without being having bottom heat. And the uh, geraniums and the rhubarb are, are in this, and they are under are on bottom heat right now. I'll be lowering this this light down lower uh, as soon as I finish videoing here. But something I want to show you. Once again, I'm on about my Tahitian squash. After I did the last video, South Paw Davy in Switzerland suggested that I put them under the grow lights, and I've done that about a week or so ago, and it has really speeded up the ripening process. So I have even more hope now than I had in the past for uh, getting a ripe Tahitian squash to try. Well, that is it for planting these seeds. Let's go on and have a look at... Uh, some of the other things that I plan to grow. Well, at least the strawberries, the rhubarb, and the geraniums are in the soil. We'll see what happens. As I said, I will show you updates as hopefully we get good germination on all of them. What you're looking at here is red curry squash, which is also called Hokkaido pumpkin. I really like the thing. I think, once again, it's a type of Hubbard squash, or in that family anyway. But my problem is I'm quite sure that mine are cross-pollinated and I'm not getting the authentic squash anymore. So I've ordered fresh seed and uh, they won't be planted until a week or two before it's time to put them in the garden. But I look forward to getting some uh, better fruit off of them, hopefully. I, only, I think I got two off of the one vine that I grew last summer. I know they're cross-pollinated because I cross-pollinate things. Uh, anytime there's a squash blossom in bloom, I don't care if it's the neighboring plant isn't the same variety or not, I self-pollinate uh, and get more squash that way. So I'm quite sure that I've probably cross-pollinated them with some other kind of squash. I'm only planning to grow one variety of tomatoes this year. As usual, I'll grow them inside the hoopos. And the ones that I want to grow are these, San Marzano. Um, anytime I find canned tomatoes, if I'm buying canned tomatoes, if there's San Marzano on the shelf, it's the one that I take. It's a lovely, sweet, great flavor to it. Uh, very meaty, uh, not uh, very much in the way of a seed cavity, and uh, not very watery in any way. They're quite firm. I like them sliced, you know, well, I haven't grown San Marzano, but I, I like, uh, what am I trying to think, these paste-type tomatoes. I like those 
just as well as any other kind of slicing or salad tomato in a sandwich or in a salad or whatever. So I'm sure I'll use these for all purposes as long as, as well as, as canning them in sauces and just canning some whole tomatoes if I get enough of them. Uh, I'm not expecting to have them very early in this climate though. I'll get them in the greenhouse in the hoopos growing as soon as possible. But these take a, an extra long time to mature. I'm thinking it would probably be September before I actually see ripe ones. So, worth the effort though, I think, I hope anyway. Time will tell us how successful they are. Well, I plan to grow these uh, winter squash. Sweet Mama, I've grown it before. It's a buttercup type squash. Uh, very dry and sweet and a, a very nice squash and stores quite well. I think probably not as well as what I grew this year, though I grew the ones called Golden Nugget, a uh, Hubbard type squash, and oh, they are delicious. Very small, um, pound or smaller, very hard shell, almost impossible to get them split into, I end up baking them. But my problem with them is they take up so much garden space. They're a vining type, and they grow vines literally 20 feet long in all directions. So the uh, red curry squash, the Hokkaido pumpkin that I mentioned earlier, that is a vining type, and I'm going to grow it anyway. But this is semi-vining. Um, it's not exactly a bush type, but it may... Some plants don't have any vine on them at all. They're just a bush type, and then some may have a bit of a vine, so... That's my reason for growing these. I know it's a squash that I like, but also it won't take up the half the garden like the ones that I grew last year did. I'm always looking for a lettuce that I can grow in containers. I find if I grow it down in the garden bed, <laughs> the slugs get more than I do. And I have a number of uh, long, narrow containers like uh, window box type things. And I've grown lettuce quite successfully in it before. I haven't grown this one, Little Gem Pearl Lettuce. It's a small head of lettuce. It says one uh, one head is enough to make like a salad for two people. So that, that sounded like a good variety to try. So the seeds have arrived. They will be started, I think, before I transplant them outside. But as you've seen, I've decided to grow a few under lights. So I will make sure that you see updates on that. I'm always looking for a small cucumber. I, well, a large slicing cucumber, I guess, is all right for its purposes, but I like a small cucumber to make pickles out of. I've never grown the European gherkin kind of cucumbers before, so I found this one in the seed catalog this year. Quarantine, I guess. And another thing, a feature that I like about it, it's parthenocarpic, which was my favorite word a few years ago. It just simply means that it doesn't require male and female blossoms to produce a, a, a fruit. Um, every blossom is a female blossom that will produce a, a, a cucumber without being pollinated, in which case it will be seedless. Uh, I've had different people tell me that these seedless cucumbers aren't seedless because you can see a little thing in there. Well, what you're seeing, the little thing, is the unfertilized zygote of the female blossom. Uh, it is not a viable seed, and it isn't anywhere as near as uh, you know tough or whatever as a as a seed would be. But you get excellent production out of each plant of every blossom. You haven't got to worry about it getting pollinated. So these are going in the garden. I'll see what gherkins are like, and hopefully they'll make good pickles. Last but not least is my sweet corn. Uh, well, I say last, as, you, as I think I said at the beginning of the video, I'm just doing some highlights here. I am going to be growing other things, but these are my few things that I selected to show off, I guess. I grew this same variety this year, espresso. Excellent sweet corn. Not that long a cob, but it's excellent for this area. It's a very short season corn. I grew part of them... Uh, by direct seeding and part by starting them in individual pots and transplanting them. And from that I learned that this year I will start them all in individual pots and, and transplant them. Uh, the ones that I planted later for sort of like a succession cropping 
our season just isn't long enough to do that. You have to be happy with what you get, I guess, with the ones that you started early. I also planted in the same, well, in my cage where I grow my corn so that the raccoons can't get it, I planted pink popcorn, which worked. I've been popping it, and it's appeared in a couple of my videos here. However, it cross-pollinated with my espresso. I had no idea that uh, cross-pollination would change the looks of the corn cob immediately. My opinion was that it would cross-pollinate and the next generation when you planted it you'd see the difference. But what I hadn't taken into consideration is what you're eating and when you eat corn is the seed and it changed the seeds immediately. I had the yellow and the white uh, bicolor corn like I should and then every once in a while it'd be pink or purple strange looking things and it did the same thing with the popcorn. I had gobs of the popcorn that wasn't normal. So this year I'll just be planting my espresso. Look forward to trying it again. It's an excellent corn. I still have some cobs frozen in the freezer. Well thank you very much for watching this little video. Some indication of what I will be growing in the garden next year and as I said I will bring you updates later on on the things that I have seeded and are going to be growing under lights. Thank you for watching.